Well, let's turn to currencies. The Aussie dollar taking a hit after the RBA paused its uh, tightening of monetary policy following a 25 basis point lift last month to leave the cash rate at 4.1%. Let's get across what's going on there. Lachlan Meekin joining us from Go Markets. Lachlan, good to catch up with you on this Thursday afternoon. So just in terms of the Aussie dollar, yeah, we did see that movement after the RBA decision. Uh, Look, we're also looking at what's going on in China. It did take a bit of a hit after more soft data coming out of China. Yeah, mate, on the actual uh, announcement, there was a a fair little spike down. I probably um, showed that there was too many people on the wrong side of that bet. It was a a little bit more pronounced than I thought. But having a look at that statement, there was really nothing in it that was going to sustain a down move that was, I guess, on on look, it's, it's hawkish. It was certainly nothing really had changed from the previous one. So I wasn't surprised that later in the session it did bounce back. But um, it was a fin session, obviously, with the US on holiday. And they seem when the, the US traders have got back yesterday that uh, they've looked at that Chinese data, as you said, that, that services PMI being pretty weak. And the Chinese yuan as well taking a hit despite a, a pretty strong fixing. So that, that was big headwinds in the Aussie dollar last night, pulled back. Um, also a bit of dollar strength and, and I guess a bit of risk off with the equity markets coming off a little bit. Uh, we, yeah, we have seen a bit bit of a bounce this morning, though, on, uh, despite the equities being down on, um, uh, as you said, the trade balance being pretty positive. Um, but, yeah, there's still very low volatility at the moment. It's, it's very range-bound, the Aussie dollar. I think these these big levels will come into play, these technical levels, and we saw it uh, find a lot of resistance last night at that 200-day moving average, which sits on the 67 level. So, um, yeah, 66 to the down, 68 to the upside, um, kind of revolving around that 67. 67 seems to be where the Aussie dollar is going to go unless there's some type of catalyst that we get some more volatility in equity markets. Yeah, of course, we also had those Fed minutes out overnight. What did we see with the US dollar? Uh, yeah, I mean, the minutes, there was nothing really surprising. I mean, I mean, they pretty much reiterated what had come out of the meeting um, earlier in June uh, and, and some of the Fed talking heads after that. So, I mean, the US dollars rallied pretty strongly after that, after that meeting due to I guess the the rejigging of the dot plot and, and markets pricing in uh, that new reality. But um, the minutes yesterday, by the time that came out, the US dollar was already rallying, and that was basically just following the uh, the ten year yields. There's been a real correlation um, with those ten year Treasury yields and, and the US dollar. If you look at the dollar index compared to those, are almost moving tick for tick. But um, I think the the US dollar its its run has been good for the last couple of weeks. But I'm I'm dubious of any any further upside, to be honest, with uh, with the 10-year yields hitting almost 4%, where they've really kind of topped out in the last couple of years. Um, I, I, I think the US dollar upside, yeah, from here may be a little bit laboured, but we'll see. That's barring any kind of real sell-off in equities as well, obviously, but um, that's how it's looking at the moment. Yeah, because we of course, we're looking forward to some key data out of the States with those non-farm payroll figures at the end of the week and then, then the key inflation numbers uh, next week at the same yeah. time. Yeah. Yes, sorry. Yeah, there is some very important um, labour data actually tonight, tomorrow night as well with, with uh, the ADP, jolts and the non-farmer. So, yes, they'll be ones to keep an eye on. Um, I think that the, the next meeting, the Fed's already priced in very hawkishly. It's hard to see it getting any more hawkish. So the surprise, the downside is probably the, where the bigger move will be. But um, looking from the estimates, they are expected to come in strong. So that will support the US dollar to an extent, I think, yeah, in the last, next couple of days if, if that comes about. Lachlan, what are we seeing with the yen at the moment? Because uh, there's certainly some issue just as far as potential intervention uh, to shore it up. Then I notice also uh, Japan, um, just in terms of the corporates, they're offering uh, pay hikes there. So that's um, interesting to see what's likely to, to happen more broadly with wages and how that, that could potentially fuel inflation there. Yeah, the yen's um, a really interesting one. Uh, mate, the dollar yen, you've seen it just grind to that 145 level. I've, I've watched the, the dollar yen for many years, and um, when you see these big levels, whether it's the yen being too weak or the yen being too strong, as the case a few years ago, um, it's, it's funny to see that. I think traders almost like seeing, like teasing the Bank of Japan and, and testing how they go. So it's got to that 145 level where l- late last year there was a lot of jawboning, a few small interventions, and obviously the big one, uh, which culminated with that. Uh, yield, yield curve control change in December by, uh, by surprise. So um, 
the dollar yen action is very interesting on a chart. It's, it's just hit that 145 and it's just waiting. It waiting. No one seems brave enough to take it past yet. Um, I envision we'll see something similar to late last year where it'll it'll fl float around that level. There'll be some small interventions. There'll be a lot of jaw boning by um, the, the FX intervention guy I've heard in called Kanda uh, regarding excessive moves and one way uh, one way trades. Um, if it gets above 145 to 150 and we come up to the Bank of Japan meeting, I think it's on the 28th of this month, so only a couple of weeks away. Um, I think we might be able to, we might see some fireworks then, but it, the action between 145 and 150 will certainly be interesting. I think you'll see a few very sharp moves down that dollar yen as uh, either prime dealers are trying to front run the, the bodge or the bodge are doing it themselves. But um, yeah, it's an exciting one to watch actually. All right, yeah, okay, we'll keep our eyes on that. And Lachlan, what's your, what's your sort of favorite pairs trade at the moment? Um, speaking of carry trades, uh, I think dollar yen, if you jumped on that earlier, it's kind of, you'd be brave to keep going with it, I guess. But there's one that's uh, really interesting, which is the uh, US-Mexican peso. Um, I've been watching this for a couple of months. I think I mentioned it uh, earlier as well when I've been on, but it's it's hit uh, highs. The Mexican peso's hit highs not seen since 2015 against the US dollar. It's literally just been a one-way uh, trade for the last 12 months. And that's really based on um, some strong data out of Mexico, very hawkish central bank, um, a lot of inflows from remittances and corporate um, investments, and it's, it's a very high, high yield, it's over 11%. So certainly if, if, the, if you've missed the carry trade on the dollar yen, um, have a look at that one. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty interesting. It's one not many people look at, but it's, it's been one-way traffic. No matter how, how strong the US dollar's been, it's still been going down against the peso.